In this video, we're going to build a GPS data logger. Using an ESP32, a Neo 6M GPS module, and a micro SD card shield, I'm going to store GPS data onto a micro SD card. As usual, I'll go over the assembly of the hardware as well as the software that we're going to need for putting the device together. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. They're currently offering a free PCB prototype with your first order. The ordering process in their website is pretty straightforward. They offer a wide variety of options for manufacturing your PCBs, as well as short lead times and very fast shipping. Now, when you log in, you're able to accumulate reward points that you can use to get discounted or free products. With outstanding manufacturing capabilities and the excellent products that result, I highly recommend NextPCB for manufacturing and assembling your PCBs. For this project, I'll be using an ESP32 development board in the Wemos form factor. I'll use the inexpensive Neo 6M GPS module which comes with a tiny ceramic antenna. I'll also use a micro SD card shield for the Wemos and a micro SD card. To make the device mobile, I'll include a Wemos battery shield and a LiPo battery. To put everything together with the minimum amount of wiring, I'll use a 3x1 base for the Wemos family of boards. As usual, you can find most of these components in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. The assembly of the hardware is pretty straightforward. If you're following along and already know how to do this, feel free to skip ahead on the video. Something to note with using some of the battery shields for Wemos is that the header doesn't match the standard connector on LiPo batteries. To solve this, I bought pre-wired connectors that match the one on the Wemos battery shield. Another thing to note is that the wires had a different polarity than what's on the board. So make sure you check this if you're trying to do the same thing. I really like how these base boards make my life easy for connecting things together. As for the GPS module, instead of using something like a proto shield, I'll simply mount it on the base and do the wiring manually. With the hardware assembled, it's time to start working on the software. I'll open up the Arduino IDE and use the Tools menu option to select Manage Libraries. Although there are different libraries that work with the Neo 6M module, my preferred one is the one called TinyGPS. I'll go ahead and install that and to use it, I'll also need to install the Software Serial Library for the ESP family of boards. With the libraries installed, I'll go through the file menu, select the examples option, and look for the entries of the tiny GPS library. I'll open up the one called simple test and make a few changes. As I'm using D4 and D3 for the serial communication, I'll need to adjust the pin numbers. Note that these are different on the ESP32 
than on the original Wemos for the ESP8266. I'll also change the baud rate to match what's used by the Neo 6 and module. The example shows us the way to parse the GPS data coming from the module and extract the relevant parts, specifically the latitude, the longitude, the number of satellites that is tracking, as well as the precision of the data. As I'm not interested in seeing anything else, I'll simply add a return statement when the data is successfully parsed. With those changes in place, I'll go ahead and connect the ESP32 to the USB port of my computer. I'll select the corresponding board and port and load up the software. If I open up the serial monitor, I can see the GPS data being printed. One thing to note is that if the GPS device is indoors, I might get a value of 0 for the latitude and longitude. I can try placing the device near a window or go outside. After successfully testing the GPS module, it's time to test the SD card. For this, I don't need to install any additional libraries, I'll simply need to use the file menu, select the examples option, and choose DSD test sketch for the ESP32. The only change I'll need to make to this sketch is specifying which CS pin we're using. In the case of the micro SD card shield, by default it's GPIO number 5. With those changes in place, I'll first load the SD card to my computer. I'll then use the built-in macOS disk utility to flash the SD card. I'll give it the name Data Logger, and one thing I really need to make sure is that the format is FAT. With the card properly formatted, I'll go ahead and place it into the Wemos shield. I'll then upload the code to the ESP32, and when I open a serial monitor, I can see that the files in the sketch were created. As a sanity check, I can place the microSD card back into my computer and use the file explorer to make sure that they're actually there and can be read by the operating system. With everything working as expected, it's time to put it all together. I'll navigate to my demos for the ESP32 repository and look for the GPS SD logger sketch. I'll create a new sketch in the Arduino IDE and paste the code. This new sketch uses the GPS libraries we were using before, as well as the ones for the SD card. As an optional step, I've added a way to timestamp the data. Notice that this needs the presence of a Wi-Fi connection and uses a network time protocol server. For this to be able to run, I'll need to make sure that the NTP client library is installed. I'll use the library manager once again. And after installing the library, I'll make sure to include my network ID and password so that the ESP32 can connect to Wi-Fi. I won't go over all the details in the sketch, but feel free to ask me any questions in the comments of the video. The gist of it is that it creates a file in the SD card that I named data. It also makes use of the deep sleep function and only records data every 10 minutes. You can of course change this to whatever you want. The actual measurements are gathered in a user-defined function that I've named getReadings. It uses similar code to the example that we tried before. In another user-defined function named logSDCard is where I construct the data string that's actually saved. It includes the timestamp that we get from the NTP server, as well as the latitude and longitude that we get from the GPS module. But without further ado, let's give this code a try. I'll go ahead and upload it to the ESP32. And after doing so, if I open the serial monitor, I should see the data being collected. Notice that this time around I'm away from a window, so the first entry in my file for latitude and longitude is 00. zero. But if I go back and place it near a window, the next time I get the measurements will be the actual values for the location of this device. To really be sure that everything worked as expected, I'll go ahead and place the SD card back on my computer open the data text file and see that all the measurements are actually there. So there you have it, using the ESP32 and an inexpensive GPS module, we've built 
a device that can collect location coordinates and store it onto an SD card. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.